Okay, hi everybody. We made it to Friday. We made it to Friday being here home together. Um, and I want to thank all of you who have messaged us and told us how much uh, these conversations have helped, uh, how you have find, found them fun, inspiring, helpful, motivating, whatever the word you have chosen to use. I just want to thank you uh, so much for uh, letting us know that. Uh, also so grateful to all the incredible people who have joined us on Home Together to provide inspiration, to provide healing words, to provide help, and uh, to provide hope. Uh, that's what these conversations are. They're meaningful conversations with healers, helpers, and cultivators of hope, which I believe we all are. And uh, we're super excited today to be doing two of these back-to-back. The first one being with Bethany Frankel, who has started this incredible initiative called Be Strong. And she's you know, donating money to get mass, working with many hospitals and cities and organizations to try to get over a million masks in the coming days to uh, various hospitals. And then we'll be speaking with my cousin Joe Kennedy after we speak with Bethany um, to talk about what's going on in Washington. The president just signed a big a uh, huge relief package uh, for everyday Americans. He also put into effect the Defense um, Production Act. And so um, we're gonna talk to him about that and what that means to you. And uh, the president just signed um, over to mandate GM to begin making ventilators, which I think Joe will also talk to us about and uh, what's around the corner for uh, all of us uh, who are waiting to find out when we can go back to our jobs. Uh, I know so many people are asking that. So many people have also asked about, you know, when will there be help for their uh, loved ones who work in emergency rooms, who work in hospitals. So we'll also ask Joe about that. And I know you've been a long time admirer of Bethany. Yes, I'm super excited to be able to, uh, to talk with Bethany. I've actually reached out to her um, in the past, just curious to know more about her career path and, and uh, her uh, business ventures and now curious to know more about her philanthropic side and uh, helping her community and the nation in such a uh, time of, of crisis. So I'm extremely excited to be able to talk with her and then also to get to catch up with my cousin, uh, Joe, who I only get to see usually during the summer times and has been hard at work trying to help this nation as well in a different way. but. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're excited to be able to do two people today, back to back, uh, from two different, you know, fields and, and sectors, but both are uh, doing stuff to come together and help this nation. So I think what's really interesting also about Bethany is that she's pivoting, right? She's a entrepreneur, a businesswoman, a activist, an author, and then taking an initiative of her company and switching it into try to, how can I help by getting masks to people who need them? I think everybody is pivoting and trying to pivot at this time. And so learning from people who are managing to pivot, Joe, who's running for the Senate, uh, put his campaign on hold and pivoted uh, to focus on his uh, work as a congressman. But how does he keep his campaign alive and engaged even though he can't be actually doing his campaign? And so. Bethany has her initiative and how, what has she learned and how is she pivoting and how are the people who work for her pivoting? So I think I just saw that she's trying to join us. Oh, so um, That's my job. That's Patrick's job to figure out. Um, yeah, not yet. Requests. Oh, yep. There she is. There we go. And three, that two. Probably more skilled at this than us. Probably. Yes. We're, we're getting the hang of it. Yeah, we are actually, we're doing well. <laughs> Am I lighting, is my lighting okay? I'm not good at technology. Oh, okay. uh, we were just saying how we think you're you're probably better at this than we are. <laughs> no way, no way. <laughs> Hi, I'm not even, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing most importantly? How are you holding up? Um, you know, you gotta be sort of organized and surgical and um, it's a, it's a real, it's a war out there. It's a jungle right now, it's like really like, Game of Thrones or Hunger Games or something nuts. 
So you, you really stepped in, as I was saying before you came on. I really admire that, by the way. I think I have so much respect with what you're doing with your Be Strong initiative. And you're saying, you know, I want to pivot. You started by doing disaster relief. And now you said, I want to get a million masks out there into the hands of healthcare workers and into hospitals that need it. How are you doing that? And how can people help you? Well, what's going on right now, I'm trying to move where I'm not like blazing in light. Okay, what's yeah, happening better. now? We're, okay, much better. Okay, I'm not great at this. Okay, so it started with Corona kits, which was to be um, these kits that have basically hydration systems and immune, immunity builders and wipes and, sanit and sanitizer, which was being price gouged and medical information and um, some protective gear. And that was originally going to be 20,000 kits. And those will be distributed to people and to healthcare workers because they're dehydrated and they need that. But then we did pivot because I did realize a little bit early that the protective gear was going to be a big problem. Just because I troll my social media when I'm doing relief work and I just read what every nurse and every doctor is saying. And so I started to hear messages about masks and gloves and reusing. And I was a little bit early into that game. And because we've done so much relief work all over the world in Puerto Rico and Australia and the Bahamas and Guatemala and places that we still are finishing our aid now, like we just, we just two weeks ago uh, sent a, a, a truck to, uh, to Tennessee because of their tornado, uh, terrible tornado disaster. And then that no one even realized that because so many other things were happening. So I started to work with basically my worldwide network of people in humanitarian work and i had relationships for masks because we've worked in guatemala with masks before and so then we got in touch with governments in massachusetts and arizona and cuomo and uh they were telling people that you know are pretty connected that i could move more quickly than they could because there's a lot more red tape and so then began the combination of me working with the, the public sector, so working with state governments, which has been a really amazing experience because it's been very different. When I've done work in the Bahamas and in, in Puerto Rico, we've sort of had to go rogue. You've had to just sort of go in Mexico, go rogue, you know, have the party, ask questions later, get everything you need, figure it out, get the aid to the people, and, you know, not really ask many questions. But in this case, it's been really amazing to work with uh, Cuomo's office, for example, we are in the in the process of getting them, um, you know, millions of hazmat, biohazard hazmat suits, and um, in the middle of negotiating right now, getting them, um, fingers crossed, ten million, uh, ten million of the the medical masks, and working with uh, the government. I'm Maria Shriver. Like, really? So, so then to get the governor of Massachusetts what they need and Arizona what they need, but to be communicating back and forth between the governments based on who needs the most. And the money that we're raising, though, we just got a massive donation from Billy Joel today, which we really needed. We've gotten donations from Perel and, and from Ellen and just awareness from so many people, from Amy Schumer and Alan Pompeo and Gabrielle Union just called. And so all of this is great because those donations are to go to the people, the hospitals around the country who could never afford to buy, to buy their own equipment, who can't afford to buy and get reimbursed by FEMA, not that they'd know where to, where to get it. So there's, there's another thing that's happening where many of the hospitals are coming to us directly to order these items because we've sort of, we're sort of cornering the market on these items. We're kind of watchdogging the people that are scammers and that are, uh, there are so many people that I have a, list and I'm checking it twice that are marking these things up and price gouging and real, real corruption. But I have to weed through all of that to get the best things as quickly as possible for the best price. So hospitals are coming to us and we're delivering to hospitals nationwide. But the donations are so important because we have to help all of those smaller hospitals, the, the yeah. elderly homes, the, 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 the places with mental health issues, the children's hospitals, and we're dealing in like $50 million transactions right now. These are not, wow. these, these, this equipment is expensive. So some of the stuff we're doing with governments are, you know, 12 and 15 and 25, you know, so million dollars. where do people donate, Bethany? How do people donate to you? And several people said, I hope you're not going to forget about rural hospitals as well. But how do That's people the reason, donate? 
How do they donate? So so to donate to Be, Be Strong is Bethany, B-E-T-H-E-N-N-Y dot com slash Be Strong. And that's the reason people need to keep donating because the Billy Joels who just literally, I explained the model and, you know, when he heard that I said the money that gets donated, if you're not specifically allocating it somewhere, because it is someone's choice to do that, but if you're not, then this is how we're going to help all of the small hospitals, which we've been tracking for days and we've gotten thousands and thousands a day of doctors nurses heads of hospitals children's hospitals you know telling us they're desperate for for these masks these hazmat suits these goggles anything so that's the difference we can get big money and government money to help them and they're helping all of the hospitals that they're doing amazing jobs but you know they're trying to blanket the big major worst hit hospitals first which is understandable so i'm doing parallel paths which is helping them help the big hospitals, but then also blanket the nation and try to help as many small facilities, urgent care clinics as we possibly can. So that's sort of how, you know, and we've got like 10 states under wraps right now that we're working with, but we need to help everybody. Right. Well, I, I first off, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time. I've been a big fan of you uh, and all of your work in, in the entrepreneurial space. And just hearing you talk about how these different places have been price gouging and you've had to uh the government has told you that you're basically going to be able to get these masks and do everything faster it really sounds like your background in entrepreneurialism and business has really been a a big uh forefront of all of this i mean you're being able to find masks at better price know which masks are real which aren't really negotiate with people how much of your business background has been uh so so great with this that's an amazing question. So Lady Gaga and Rihanna's uh, publicist who used to represent me said to me in the beginning when she called uh, Cuomo's office and they said, you should, you know, Bethany's going to be able to get this stuff done quickly. And then we all started working together. She said, you know, because you're a business person and so many, you know, people and celebrities with respect to them posting links and they may not even know where they're posting links to. They may not know that 80% goes to bureaucracy and to overhead. And that's the thing that was scary in the beginning here because I was laying out um, proofs of funds uh, for millions of dollars of masks because you can't wait. We can't wait until I get all this money in to start buying millions of dollars of masks. So, you know, my right. boyfriend was the one to start with the with with the donation for the masks for Mass General, and I was giving proof of funds for donations for um, <clears throat> Cuomo, and we had to get the ball rolling. But to answer your question, there are letters of intent. I have lawyers. I right now have people going to warehouses to vet that these masks actually exist. That that um, that five to ten million masks that you're opening up boxes and making sure are they what they're supposed to be? Are these biohazard hazmat suits, water resistant, like, wow. and yes, to, to vet everybody and to negotiate, to negotiate, to negotiate against each other and to say, you'll be screwing around with Governor Cuomo, who's acting, you know, like a president right now. Yeah. And if you screw around with him, your name, you know, your ass is going to be grass and, and he's going to be the lawnmower because I'm, you know, so I'm like, you know, a terrorist in, in, in for the good, for the good fight, you know, right. working. But it has been like, I'm not kidding warfare hedge fund guys buying masks at three dollars a couple of weeks ago trying to sell them now for five dollars because they wow. feel like they made their money and they got to get out there's so many side stories to philanthropy that are disgusting that you have to be a person who can weed through it and you need the stomach for it because you'll have it all going good in one minute and the next minute just like business you know you got a deal going great and then the next minute you're like i'm not going to be able to deliver how am i going to disappoint these people so it's 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 like every time it's like a pop up startup, but with real big major numbers and the highest stakes I've ever worked with. This is life or death. These people are risking their lives to save our lives. What would we do without our doctors? They are like firefighters walking into a fire without helmets. Yeah, yeah. Bethany. So many people are like I don't have any money that I can contribute, but I can help. You know, hand out masks, or I can help in other ways. Are there ways for people to get involved? Uh, you know, where they can still comply with the stay-at-home uh, orders that people are under. They may not have the money, but they want to be of service. They want to help. This is, not, this is not an exaggeration at all. When I tell you that Twitter and Instagram 
really is the reason for this entire Be Strong initiative from the beginning, from Puerto Rico, from the Bahamas. The people that are watching this have saved so many lives just from connecting dots, from me posting, oh, I need trucking and I need 20 trucks to get a million biohazard suits and then using it as a switchboard. And then someone, you know, people reaching out to me on social media, hospitals reaching out. I remember my first mission, my first plane ride to Puerto Rico where a, p a woman said, I'm a pediatric nurse and we have no supplies. And my team went to Costco, because this is before we had a big warehouse in Miami, to get them what we needed. And they met us on the tarmac. And that was a person from Twitter. So literally using wow. social media to spread the word, to tell people to donate, to explain the gravity, to connect the dots, to talk to me. You know, I read everything. So it, 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 we really are all home, but we're all links in a chain we are part of the change we i anybody that i know who's a good evolved person right now is 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 making something out of this change they feel that it's some sort of a global reset and is personally feeling differently about the world about people about the superficiality about you know yeah. filters and pretending we're rich and we have such great lives and the disparity in income and capitalism and so many things are coming out in just the way that people are tolerating and digesting information right now that if you're in the moment and you're trying not to panic about your life situation and <clears throat> if you're poor or you're losing your job or to try to stay centered to try to stay calm and to try to be part of the change because I do feel that this is a very unfortunate and sad but real reset there's just a shift and I everybody that I know that I care about that I respect is feeling it too Right. Well, speaking of that kind of major shift that you just brought up, you know, um, a lot of people have been asking that they have their kids that are about to graduate. And uh, a lot of them are really interested in business and entrepreneurialism. And they have these these high dreams of becoming, you know, business men and women. What are your recommendations to people that are that are looking to graduate right now or that are young in their fields and that are wanting to explore this kind of uh, this you know, business or entrepreneurialism in such a interesting kind of economic time. And um, yeah. Well, you know, now's the time when you can't get through the door, you get through the window. And, you know, I'm noticing, you know, my staff has been, you know, they're all working from home and they, for a minute, were stunned deer. They just, and I, I never go into my office. It's right. five ste steps from my home, but I always, I've written many books on a Blackberry and on an iPhone and I work, you know, just from connecting and for, I don't even have a computer or, or really an iPad. I, I am just a connector using this device and it makes, makes it that I can be with my daughter when, when I, whenever I want to and pick up and drop off and everything, but they've been stunned. And so I had to sort of reshift and shake them up and teach them new new tools, new skills, new ways. And I don't just mean an app like connecting people like Zoom, like ways to think differently, ways to attack right. the process right. differently. Like take a step back, take a deep breath and come around, come at it in a different way. So this will be teaching people, you know, not just what you learn in business school, not just what you learn in an office, how to really like, you know, fight for it and, you know, figure out a way to find your way into success and into business. And so I'm finding new ways of doing things. I mean, even, you know, me, I'm, I'm finding new ways to run my business. I'm finding that I'm having more ability to breathe it's in the, between all this craziness, but in different ways to think about business and different ways to think about doing things. And, and I think people are finding different ways to enjoy and work with and, and experience and tolerate their families and, cooking and stretching and exercising at home and not being so, you know, I, I like that I'm making matcha tea at my house instead of every day spending $5 and wasting cardboard <laughs> cups and like feeling like a bad person. Like all the cups, I see everybody at the cups and it's just like, that's such a silly little thing, but just the things of, of cooking at home and being at home and, and, and not just having to go out for activation at all times. Right. At all times and not feeling that you always have to be putting makeup on or showing, you know, your eyelashes or taking a picture of yourself in a bathing suit and filtering yourself to look like, you know, not even like your neighbor. Like all that garbage seems like so unimportant right now. And I think that's that's good. I, I think one of the things, Bethany, that I, I like to talk about to young people, if they can't get that dream job, is go and be of service and that you'll meet somebody that you didn't know and maybe they'll have a job down the road. So actually 
you know, people who admire you or admire different entrepreneurs can go and get involved in their initiatives right now. And 100. You'll notice that they're really smart or they're innovative or they're creative. And when things settle down, maybe there's a job for that person that nobody knew or that people are kind of realizing different things about themselves. I'm wondering, have you learned anything about yourself in this that you well, didn't know? <laughs> well, it's funny that you just said that. I'll, I'll answer your question. But, you know, just today, a girl uh, emailed because she's realizing that there's a woman in our warehouse that is in taking all those small those comments for those smaller hospitals and uh, allocating certain masks and gear for those smaller hospitals nationwide. And she asked to be, you know, and don't send 10,000 emails today about this, please, because I'll, 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 I'll explode after dealing with what I'm dealing with. But she, she, she came and found her way in to want to be an intern for that person to help allocate, you know, gear to hospitals. And I thought that was just so amazing right now to, to want a non-paid internship to get involved. And you can virtually be involved, by the way. I have, had, I have assistants in relief work that I've met one time you know, through WhatsApp chats and just like, get on it and let's do this. And you can do that and delegating. And yes, to answer your question, um, I mean, I've just learned how, I've learned the good in people and I've learned that the people who have less money always want to do more, which is always shocking to me. It's the people of less money that are how we're in the millions of donations and that you're learning new skill sets. And, and to your point, you're finding your way in and, and you're going to learn things that you didn't know before. And we're having different conversations and, and this coronavirus and healthcare and ways to work at home and ways to interact and ways to interface differently. These are all new skill sets. And yes, I've hired people that were coat check girls that ended up running you know, major parts of my business going on to work for Paul Allen and Red Bull. So for me, I always hire people who are, the best, like just who are on it. Like, I'm on it. What do you need? I'm on it. It doesn't matter what their resume says. It doesn't yeah. matter what they do. I got you. I'm on it. So if you're a person right now that finds your way into making yourself useful rather than disruptive and anxiety ridden, right. you know, just you can be so helpful. And that's, that's how I became successful. I've had 50 different jobs and I always treated every single job as if it was the most important job, even if it was making copies, even if it was when I was a PA on Saved by the Bell and sorting licorice at the craft service table. I always treat it, I didn't do it if I wasn't gonna do it well. I don't make a meal if I'm not doing it well. I don't have a party if I don't do well. I don't, I right. do things well. So I think that that's a great message because what you're saying, you're asking such amazing questions that are actually even making me think, and it's it's true. And I have a show coming out called The Big Shot, which I'm not promoting yet because it's totally not the time for me to promote a, an entrepreneurial show. But I hire people. It's about being my successor and working for me. I hire people based on their attitude, based on right. their will to work and go get it. Like, go oh, get it. And execute. That's execute. great. And I think that's really uh, great advice for some of the families and parents and also some of the young people that are in this, uh, watching this Instagram live, because a lot of them are worried about oh no, what happens? What will people think of now that I can't finish school or not get those extra few months? Or uh, what if I'm, you know, dropped out of school to pursue my, my ambitions and everything. So I think that that advice coming from someone like you is, is really great. And, and your kind of mindset of, of telling people that they really need to start thinking of kind of what are the opportunities right now? How can I be the best? How can I work the hardest? Are there any companies you're really admiring? Because, you, you know, we've seen something like Tesla with Elon Musk now doing uh, ventilators or, you know, what Trump put today with GM or, um, you know, Cheetos Vodka now doing hand sanitizers. Are there any um, companies that you're really admiring or people that are using right now to try and, you know, shift their business to help others? I am not, I don't know enough about it. I hear companies that are now donating through their companies. I haven't seen a lot of personal wealth being donated. So I, I don't know what, what I know that a lot of companies are shifting and that's great. But for me personally, I'm looking for, you know, wealthy person donations who are like, we care our hearts are like Billy Joel just came in like gangster. Like he just came in like a gangster. Like I just want to help all those small hospitals. So I don't, I don't know enough about it. I'm hearing yes. what you're saying about Tito's for hand sanitizer and that's great. And I, you know, one big company reached out to me and I was thinking, yay, they're a multi-billion dollar company, but they kind of wanted to market 
what they're doing through Got this it. crisis. So without Got being it. a hater, you know, it's like, oh, we want to give everybody free blah, blah, blahs. And I'm at the hospitals and I'm said, well, if you want to give everybody, why don't you just give me money? Because you're billionaires. So if you want to give everybody free blah, blah, blahs, then those people at the hospitals are going to stop down from everything that they're doing, accepting right. masks and accepting your blah, blah, blahs. So I don't, you know, I'm a little, uh, we need money. We need yeah. money. And the ventilators, yes, that's amazing. If they're donating ventilators, it's amazing. It's amazing what Bill and Melinda Gates are doing. It's amazing what many serious philanthropists are doing. Definitely not being a hater. I just, I don't know enough about it. But I will say that knowing, Maria, you know so much more about politics than I do, which is not saying a lot because I don't know anything and you do know a lot. But I will say that it's fascinating to watch government get involved with private relief in this way. I haven't seen this yet. It's basically like the right people are just saying, I, I don't care. Figure yeah. out, figure it out. Let's get it done. Pick up a broom, execute and let's go. So I'm, I'm just really impressed by local governments right now. Just saying we are all this together and let's get it done together and just figure it out and save lives. That's what I, I didn't know that it was like that. I haven't heard of it being like that. I haven't had that experience. So I'm really excited about that. So that's that's great. Several people saying Drew Brees today donated five million dollars, so they want to shout him out, which is great. Many who is that here? Drew Brees down in Louisiana, wow. five million dollars this morning, uh, which was incredible. And then people, all I think, a lot of people asking how they can join you. And uh, once again, uh, Bethany Franco slash Be Strong. Uh, so uh, people want to help, they want to donate. So that's a good thing. Coming up after you is my cousin Joe Kennedy in Massachusetts. Is there any request you have of him so we can start out by talking to him? Do you want to say anything to him? Tell him anything? Well, I, 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 want, I want him to know that we're here from Massachusetts. I have a home, I have a home with my boyfriend in, uh, in Boston. And Mass General was one of our first phone calls. I spoke to Cuomo and I spoke to Mass General. And we're talking to the governor right now about getting them the supplies that they need. We're working like crazy to get them these masks that they need. And they've been very amazing and generous in saying, if we take this, they said we'll send the National Guard to accept them. And if we take them and we have a surplus, we'll give them, you know, give them back to you or whoever else you're saying needs them because we're getting all these different requests. So I thought that was been, has been amazing. And, you know, not every local government works the same. And Massachusetts has been extremely efficient and lack of red tape from my experience, yes. what we've experienced so far. So they have been awesome. So I'm excited. And, and Newton Wellesley Hospital literally, literally saved my life. So, you know, I'm, I'm indebted to, to Mass General. And I, I, I think Matt Massachusetts is doing a great job. And I'm super excited to be aligned with them. And I want to shout out because you gave a shout out. So many people, but Ellen DeGeneres, who always comes for like, steps up first with me for Puerto Rico, gave me three planes. She was the first person, you know, even before I had everything totally locked down last week, her, her, uh, she was saying, no, we want to post now. We want to post whatever you're, whatever you're doing, we're behind you and we support you. So, you know, I want to give Ellen DeGeneres a big shout out because she has such media power and it really means a lot because when you're just a mom and pop shop, uh, relief organization, you know, relief initiative, you need that. Well, I want to thank you, Bethany, so much for the incredible work you're doing. You don't have to do it. And I think what we have seen, I, what I've been so inspired by so many people stepping up, trying to be of service, trying to be of help. And that's so great because the last several years we've been inundated with stories about how divided we are, how much everybody hates one another. And now we're inundated with stories about how much people want to help one another, which I've always believed was out there. Same. And, uh, and you're, sh you're showing it. And I want to also say that it's so great what you were saying, that every job you had, whether it was sorting licorice on the craft table, that you wanted to do it the best that you possibly could. So for so many kids who are about to graduate, who don't have their graduation or are wondering about the job market they're going to go into, just do the best you can with whatever it is, and that will lead to someone noticing. Right. Well, it's called, I wrote a book called The Place of Yes, and there's a chapter, there's a couple of things that apply to this. One is, all roads lead to Rome. Be on the road, though. You may get derailed, you may hit a roadblock, be on the road right. moving forward. You know, get on, be on the road. 
and never assume anyone's smarter than you. Not to mean that you're supposed to be irreverent, but it means you could have an amazing idea and execute it. You cannot be, you know, put, knocked down. And I've been told no so many times in doing all this, and I just push, push through. And it's important for me to say to your um, viewers that 100% of Be Strong, the funds donated, goes directly to the initiative. That's why we don't have $15 million lying around for the first order of of masks we had to do. And I had to be like calling my, you know, banker to be like, pretend, prove I have the funds so I can get these masks. Because we, we give every penny. So it's important that you all know that we connect you to where the money is going without, it just, you know, you, you send money somewhere and you never know what the heck happens. So even if you donate $5, I'm constantly updating to let you know what we're doing, how we're doing it, if we're pivoting, if something else becomes more important, you know, more dire. So that's one of the greatest things about this is that I've loved connecting to people to let them feel empowered. If they donate a dollar, $2, $5, where it's going, how it's getting executed. And we're still building schools and homes in the Bahamas and still aiding um, Puerto Rico long after their hurricane. So we stay long after the headlines fade. Right. Well, thank you so much. It was really, uh, you know, an honor to be able to talk with you uh, from the business side and get to know all about your entrepreneurial background and some words of advice to people that are my age, to yeah. your age, to uh, so every age. age. And, well, I uh, think you guys would be good at, like, do a real show together. It's like a good dynamic. You have very different questions in there, but it's really good. I like this. That, But you uh, might kill each other. I don't know. You're, you're, you're mother and son. So. <laughs> but I like I'm it. I'm so glad because he admires you so much. Whenever I say anything, he's like, you should talk to Bethany Frankel. She's really smart. She's really smart. So there. Now, I'm interested in your humanitarian work, and he's interested in your business work. So, And you're all in one. So bravo. And I've always been told when I was younger that I had the Shriver jaw, by the way. Oh, well, then we're related. <laughs> yes, we might be related. So awesome. Thank you okay, so much. Well, thank you, Bethany. Keep up the great work. Thank God you so much. You. Thank you. Great to see you. <laughs> that was really wonderful. Uh, Bethany doing extraordinary work. I think a lot of great advice there. I love the advice also about if you're going to sort licorice, sort it well. Do it well. And people who uh, hire people, they rarely, like myself, I don't look at people's resumes. I look at their attitude. I look at their work ethic. I look right. at whether when I interview them, did they write me a thank you note? And I think what she was saying is that she hires people and is attracted to people about whether they have a can-do attitude. And I think that was so great. And, you know, this is something she's learning as she goes. Right. Um, and that's, that's what's being required of, of all of us at this time, to learn as we go to pivot. Right. To always pivot. I mean, I'm reading um, Ray Dalio's principles right now, and he explains that a lot of the people that he had hired had no former education kind of background, didn't go to schools and everything. And he always focused on the people's creativity and their vision and, and uh, their willingness to do the work and, and build themselves their way up. So for anybody that's listening out there that, that maybe doesn't have that educational background and still knows that they're willing to put in the work that uh, wants to make the best out of every opportunity, um, I think you just got some great advice from someone that's been there and, and done that, like Bethany. And tomorrow we're actually talking to your business mentor. Yes. Who talks a lot, and we're going to do it on Patrick's Instagram page. Yes, yeah, so tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. here in, in Los Angeles, we'll be talking on my Instagram, doing the same thing together at home, me and uh, my mom. And we'll be talking with my mentor, Ed Milet, who is a uh, you know renowned business uh, leader, a New York Times bestseller, has a very large podcast. I'm sure a lot of you guys know Ed Milet. So um, we'll be uh, doing kind of a small business Saturday, really listening yeah. to people, hearing people's questions about business, the economy, um, jobs, mindset, motivation. So um, it'll be kind of a mix, but we'll be on my Instagram, Patrick Schwarzenegger, tomorrow, a little switch up. Um, and um, now we're going to be going, hopefully, we'll see if Joe Kennedy is in here somewhere. Um, so he's in a car because he had to go down to Washington to vote uh, this morning on the big relief package that the president just signed. So he's joining us from his car. And uh, so what are you doing now? You're uh, well, I was typing because you were talking, but a few people oh. just said, can you remind us what time it starts tomorrow? Oh. So tomorrow's 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. here in Los Angeles. So don't sleep 
in too late, LA folks. Yeah, Small Business Saturday. Trying small to Business come. Saturday. I love that. So many uh, small businesses struggling now and uh, so many uh, uh, opportunities to help small businesses, but small businesses really do need to learn how to pivot. There's Joe. All right, okay, Joe. Now we're going to switch. Welcome from... to the show. Welcome to Home Together. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. <laughs> Bethany Frankel said that Massachusetts. There's Joe. Hey, what's going on? Hey guys. Can hey, you hear us? Than, you have a, a, there you go. Um, you have a I can't hear you. Hopefully, uh, how are you? I am not driving. We are driving right behind a cop car, though. Um, oh, but. okay. So, Joe, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. And big news came out of Washington just a few hours ago. Uh, tell us yes. what happened. Tell us, tell us, and what that means. So, so sorry about the sunlight. Let's see if we can fix that one. Um, first off, it's great to see you guys. Uh, yeah. Thanks for yeah. having me. Uh, uh, I caught the end of your interview with uh, Bethany, which was fantastic, um, yeah. and uh, good to see you both. So, thanks for um, thanks for doing this. Um, so, yes, Congress um, just finally approved, and the president just actually moments ago signed. Um, this two trillion dollar recovery package into law. So that means that um, people are going to get um, an awful lot of assistance, the assistance that they need, at least to start, to try to navigate their way through uh, this economic crisis. Um, it's a huge boost to uh, unemployment insurance. It's a, a big boost direct cash payments. So if you're making under seventy five thousand dollars a year, we're going to give you uh, about twelve hundred bucks. Um, if you make between seventy-five and one hundred thousand dollars a year, you get about a thousand dollars, kind of on a sliding scale. There's additional support there if you've got kids. Um, there's a, over one hundred thirty, one hundred fifty billion dollars for hospitals. There's three hundred fifty billion. Um, Patrick, you were mentioning small businesses uh, at the moment, and they are under extraordinary challenging times given um, the fact that our economy was just ground to a halt. So there's about three hundred fifty billion dollars there that um, we've allocated wow. to try to support small businesses, and nonprofits. One of the big challenges we still have is we got to get that money out. You got to get it out yeah. fast. So we're trying to set up those uh, that system uh, as well. So um, a lot to, a lot of good stuff in that bill. There's some some stuff in there that's not great, but you know what? That's that's what's called compromise, um, and that's what uh, you got to do. And I, I actually am heartened by the fact that in ten short days you basically had leadership from. Democratic side of the aisle, Republicans, um, divided government with the Democratic House, Republican Senate, Republican obviously in the, in the White House, that came together in the biggest rescue package in American history and um, got it done. So a lot more work to do, and, and I think there is uh, a lot more that has to be done, but um, reason to celebrate, although I will also say um, a bit of a bummer to get into a car at 4.30 in the morning, drive down to D.C. because one person was objecting to passing this bill um, by voice vote um and so we passed it and now i'm turning around and driving home so oh, well now you get to talk to us so it's uh <laughs> hopefully we're brightening your day but i Bro, think that I, that's all good for me man you were gonna have to you were gonna do this by talking to me my wife my kids so you guys lost out on that one not me but thanks. <laughs> i think that what you kind of just brought up of the fact that you know these last 10 days have been extremely rough for for all americans for small businesses for for everyone, but one of the kind of little lights at the end of the tunnel has been that you and other kind of uh, political leaders from across the aisle have been able to work together. And, um, you know, not going too much into detail of people's political backgrounds and everything, but it's, um, you know, we wanted to kind of hear what that's been like for you and, um, you know, how it's been to work with kind of the opposition. So, look, the, uh, I think a couple things here, right? One, it is a very divided and polarized time, without question. That, that's that's true. Um, but it's also true that there's far more uh, cooperation than people expect out of Washington. Um, uh, there's some of my closest friends in D.C. are Republicans. Um, I see them every day. We were, um, some of them weren't able to make it back for, for the vote. We were, I was texting with many of them. I keep in touch with them when we're, uh, we're not there. Um, and, you know, I... Uh, I take this kind of advice that I got from, from Teddy and from my dad, and, and I'm sure you've gotten from, uh, from both sides of your guys' family, but the, the fact is that there's so many issues that come across your desk every day 
that your ally on one issue is going to be your adversary on another. And that's fine. That's literally the way that, that makes the world go around. But you find, as much as we have an obligation to stand up and fight for what you believe in, you also have an obligation to try to find those areas of agreement. And so if there's some place there that you disagree, fine, but work just as hard to find that area of agreement and keep moving it forward. And we've been able to do that, I think, reasonably well. And look, not all times obviously come to this version in this, this area of crisis, but um, you know, I think, I think there's good stuff to point to about what just happened. Joe, people want to know how are they going to get uh, the relief that comes in this relief package? How do they access it? What will it mean to them if they're stuck at home right now, their businesses are closed and they can't work? What does that actually mean when you sign this relief package to the person sitting at home? So um, a couple of things. One, um, there's for folks that qualify for that, those direct cash payments. So that's anybody making less than $100,000. That should um, work. The agencies aren't going to be in the process of uh, standing up those rules, but that should essentially be a check mailed to you or um, a direct deposit back into your account. Um, and particularly, sorry about the sign again, um, particularly about um, if you end up um, paying your taxes by direct deposit, we can actually just send you the money right back. Um, and that's one of the reasons why the direct deposit piece, um, I think was so necessary and so important so we can get this money back out into the system as quickly as, as we can. Hold on one second. Now we're the, the, um, <laughs> the Merritt Parkway is not straight. So hope we'll run it. Um, the uh, next piece on this is the small businesses. And there's a, uh, the entire point on this is to try to make sure small businesses get access to the cash that they need to at the very least stay afloat, right? We would rather have um, employees being able to stay on the rolls of their, uh, of their businesses than to have them um, laid off, have them have to apply for unemployment, have them have to uh, defer their health care costs to, um, to some sort of government pay payment program. So we want to make sure that the small businesses get access to the money that they need to, to make it through what is a very tough time, but it's a tough time because our public health system has, has failed in the midst of a pandemic, not because there was an underlying challenge to an economic system. So we're essentially offering a bunch of different series of, uh, of packages here from tax, uh, from tax holidays and tax cuts and tax deferments to um, low interest to no interest loans. Some of those loans would be forgiven uh, over time. Uh, some of those tax payments could be deferred over time. A whole bunch of different options there. And a big portion of this, the, the goal behind it, is not to have it centered in one agency that then have, now has to create a whole system to get that money out, but to actually push this down through um, local banks. And those banks already have a relationship with many of those small businesses, right? It's where those businesses are banked. It's where they get their lines of credit or where they have their, their existing banking relationship. Enable those banks to actually do a lot of this on the front line so that they can get that money out far more effectively with the backfill from the federal government. Because um, we need that money out, having it sit in a federal account does no good yeah. if people need this and they need it now. Right. And, and talk a little bit about kind of the, the other thing that was passed today, the Defense um, you know, Production Act, which I, I think you've been pushing on Twitter from what I've seen for a little while now, actually urging, uh, urging you know, the president to, to use this and, and kind of explain that because I don't think, you know, I think a lot of Americans have heard this, this word, but I don't know if they know the full meaning of it and um, what that really is. So the Defense Production Act, ah, thanks, Patrick. So the Defense Production Act is an, uh, a law that gives the president, when the president chooses to invoke it, the ability essentially to um, instruct companies to uh, help produce uh, critical needs uh, for uh, our country. And we've been pushing on the administration to invoke it, given the desperate needs for um, PPE, those, that personal protective equipment, what um, Bethany's been doing an awful lot of. Let's see here. I believe it's Joe's service, not ours. I think it's there. Um, so masks and ventilators, sorry about that. Um, and so what, um, the, we had urged the president to actually uh, engage in that process a while ago, and he said he was going to, and then he decided not to, and uh, 
ultimately today, he did decide to, with regards to, um, at least for... I think Joe is having a little bit of trouble yeah, there in his car, but driving. he's probably talking about uh, the president enacting uh, the bill today and also demanding that GE begin to make ventilators. And so I think that's probably what he's saying that he's having uh, was going to bring us up to date. Right. Can we restart, Joe? No, and then to bring ask, him back. we're not removing him. We're just going to bring him back because uh, he's driving. As he said, he went down to vote uh, in Washington today and then driving back up to Boston uh, where he lives. He commutes back and forth, as do all congressmen and women. He's also engaged in running for the Senate yes. right now, uh, which is uh, a let's great see right thing. Now, so let's see. We've got another request. Another so request see. from Joe Kennedy. No, we didn't get a request uh, from Joe yet. Kennedy. But uh, he probably is waiting for service to get back in. Yes, he's driving. I just want to make sure people understand he's not driving. <laughs> he's not driving. People wondering if he's driving. He is not driving. He has a campaign or a, uh, an aide that works for him. Um, many of you saying bravo to Joe. I agree. He's uh, been serving. He's a former Peace Corps volunteer, uh, a local uh, public defender. He's uh, been a congressman uh, for many years now. Of course, now he's running for the Senate in uh, Massachusetts, uh, a job that uh, my Uncle Teddy had for, for many, 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 many years. Right. And now Joe is running for the Senate in Massachusetts. He suspended his campaign. That's one of the things I wanted to oh, maybe talk that's about. Yep. To uh, you. Really sorry, guys. Is, <laughs> there he is. Uh, is he? Oh, no, he just said really sorry. Maybe he'll... Maybe hey, Joe, request back. us. You're back, I can see. So he's, he's coming back. But he's also, I think it's important, while he, he's doing these town halls every night on Facebook where he talks with different people about a whole host of subjects. Uh, so you can go and watch him on Facebook. He does town halls uh, pretty much every night. Joe Kennedy uh, on Facebook doing town halls. He's trying to bring on young people different people working in public health. He's bringing on um, other political leaders to talk about uh, what they're doing in Washington, what's being done locally in Boston and different parts of Massachusetts. I think it's also worth seeing, I think, very much about how important local leadership is, how important your governors are, how important your local city council members are. There he is. Oh, is it? It's a view. Okay, um, and I think view. it shows you how important go. not only it is to vote, but how important who you vote for on a local level is. You see it as your mayor. You see it in your local governor. You see it in your local congressman. There you are. I was just doing the whole thing about your, your town halls on I Facebook. know. I didn't, I, I didn't want to join back in because you're doing so well without me. Okay. <laughs> <But> <laughs> well, I, I think we were just ending, or I think you were speaking on kind of the, the Defense um, Production Act Defense and production kind of Act. what that all really meant. I think you were starting or you were talking about, um, you know, the government, you know, stepping in and getting kind of private companies or public companies to come out and to really uh, use their warehouses, use their facilities or anything that they could do to, um, to, help, to help with what's going on right now. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. And look, the bottom line here is that um, we need help. Uh, our first responders need help. Our um, folks in our hospitals are going to need help. There's a critical shortage of ventilators, uh, which was what the president essentially ordered uh, General Motors to help produce today uh, with the invocation of that act. And, um, you know, guys, I, I'm sure you have too, but if you're uh, talking to anybody at the moment, any healthcare provider, any doctor, any emergency room physician, one of our cousins is doing an emergency department rotation in New York hospital has this uh, great piece in the Atlantic that came out today about all the young people that she's treating, right? The, the initial reports from this disease were that it doesn't actually affect young people all that, all that badly. Our cousin Carrie is seeing this on the, literally on the front lines every day. Um, it's devastating. Uh, I've got uh, a number of uh, friends and some friends, children that are um, very, very sick uh, at the moment. And so, um, making sure that we have the ability to get the uh, equipment that we need to care for our people is critically important. And the Defense Protection Act is um, 
and a, a, a key tool in our arsenal. And I'm glad the president finally invoked it today. Yeah, so that, that mandates GM. It doesn't ask yeah. them. It forces them, right? So, yes. so what is, what's the big difference with that of forcing them to do it, whether as we've seen, we just were talking about in the last uh, interview of, you know, seeing Elon Musk with Tesla now doing ventilators or uh, other people doing using their facilities for hand sanitizers or uh, trying to buy masks from, from China and redistribute them. What is it that, that's different from the government side of forcing a company and is it, do you have to be that massive of a company to be to be forced to do that or? No, you don't have to be. There's no I'm unaware of any size um, or kind of contingency there, uh, Patrick. But what it basically is, I mean, it's it's far more coercive. Right. So it's not just CEOs that you've mentioned. A number of them. I was on the phone with uh, Virgin Orbit earlier this week. That is. Um, I mean, the innovation that's coming out of this is pretty extraordinary. Right. A, a space company that I hadn't given a whole lot of thought to how they could help in this. And they said, you know, we make, obviously if we're taking them to the space, we make a lot of breathing apparatus. And so we think we can help make ventilators and make them cheap. Um, so that's fantastic and that's great. And we need more help from everybody. And so um, as companies have tried to reevaluate um, their own capabilities and the needs for our citizens, you're seeing this extraordinary um, mobilization. The Defense Production Act doesn't, um, wait for that generosity or doesn't rely on that generosity it's the federal government saying hey you have this supply chain you have this supply line you have this capability we need you to do x and you are now going to do x um but, and the reason why we've been uh, pushing on this is you talk to um any doctors that are on the front lines of this in our hospitals uh, you guys have seen the pictures on social media nurses that are showing up wearing garbage bags uh, right. people that are reusing masks we we're the richest, most powerful nation in the world, and we can't protect our first responders. Um, we make a bunch of stuff in this country. That's amazing. We should celebrate it. We should be able to care for our people, too. And right. um, we don't have time to waste. Yeah, just like Bethany Franco had said before, it's literally like sending our firefighters in without their full protective gear. And it's, 100%, it's, literally. It's yeah. really wild to, to watch. But is there something that you can tell a lot of our viewers um, I know you had just mentioned to a lot of the younger people, this does affect you. We're seeing more cases in, in the USA than other countries of, of young individuals that are having to go to the hospitals and, and, and uh, you know, take up, you know, hospital bed space and stuff. Is there other things that Americans can do to try to help besides stay indoors and uh, kind of isolate and quarantine themselves like we're doing here? Yeah. yeah. So, so a couple of things, right? One, um, look, this is a, this, the virus, not only can it be deadly, it's also tricky in that you can be contagious for days before you know you are sick. Right. And that's why that quarantine is so important. So one, obey those quarantine orders, obey those, uh, those shelter in place orders. Two, make sure you're washing your hands like crazy, right? We try to be clear about the moment. Um, if you're going to a grocery store to get food, right? Wipe down that cart, wipe down the, uh, the basket. When you, before you get back in your car, do the same thing. Before you get in your house, the moment you get into your house, do it again and do it again after you, you uh, unload those groceries, right? Um, be really cognizant about who you're around. Try, um, try to make sure you're washing your hands before you, you touch other people. What, make sure you are wiping down those covered surfaces, those commonly touched surfaces frequently, right? We just, we need to get rid of these germs. And the, the preliminary data shows that the, the virus can live on metal surfaces for over a week, right? So you, you want to be careful about what you, what you wipe down then. Um, but also guys, um, stuff that I know you've been doing, check in on each other, right? Um, if you are um, somebody that has a loved one that suffers with um, some sort of mental behavioral illness, with anxiety, with, uh, with depression, if you are now in a, in a position where you have to be confined to your home, that's a really hard thing to do, right? Check in on folks. If you are, you can imagine if you're, um, if you've ever known somebody that's been in an abusive relationship, if you are confined to a living space with uh, an abusive partner, this could be deadly, right? We want to make sure that people are getting access to, to the services that they need. So whether that's support for domestic violence shelters, whether that's support for um, some of the things that you can do for, you know, just calling and checking in on people, making sure they're doing okay. Um, support for local restaurants and businesses. If you can't afford to eat out, right? Uh, do a takeout order. If not, there's, we're raising money through uh, the, our email list to, for a bunch of local uh, organizations that are trying to make sure that people stay fed. Um, you get more information off of that off of our, our Facebook and Twitter accounts. But there's a whole lot of things that people can do. 
And at this moment, Patrick, to your point, you're seeing an awful lot of the uh, real generosity from people out there that are, are trying to channel that energy someplace. Right. Yeah. So this uh, one of the users right here, Blue Rainwater, says, uh, does this relief uh, have to be paid back? And another question or start with that. So um, the short answer to that is it depends, right? So um, the direct cash assistance is not going to be paid back. That's just that's money for you. Um, some of those small business uh, accommodations will be paid back. Some of them will be forgiven. Um, some of the, you've heard a little bit about the corporate bailouts um, and the corporate assistance part that will be there. Some of that the government will, um, under certain conditions, is looking to take an equity stake, like we did, the government did with the uh, auto bailouts back in 2000, roughly 2009, where we assisted a number of the automakers, we took equity in them, and we actually, the federal government made money off of that, uh, off of that rescue. So they're looking to put, um, learn from the, our, our past economic uh, rescues, um, put in the conditions there so you don't see some of the abuses that did happen in the past, um, and try to protect the taxpayer as best we can. Um, also understanding that right now is why you recognize that we do need governments to step in in, in times like this, in a crisis like this, and, and to step up and recognize that we will pay this back in the long run in the very, very long term. Um, but that's why it's so important that we get this right right now. Well, I think that's incredible, Joe, and, and I think people will be so happy about the news today uh, that's coming out of Washington. People have been waiting for this relief bill, waiting for some relief. Uh, so many people are trying to stay at home, but also stay optimistic that there is an end in sight. Uh, what is, you know, the president the other day talked about, I want to be open for business, so to speak, in this country. By Easter, he got a lot of pushback on that. But other people said, you know, it's it's important for people to have some hope that they'll get back to business. Do you have any sense about when that might be? Uh, Maria, look, I'd say this. I I hope, I think all of us hope that you will, that we will be open for business as quickly as we possibly can. I would love to have uh, moved past this um, this virus and the crisis, the public health crisis, uh, immediately. There's not a single public health expert that I've talked to, including Dr. Fauci, you've, you've seen up at those press conferences, that believes we will be past this within two weeks. And look, some of this is regional. You're seeing New York on the front lines of this now. Boston, not all that far behind. Um, there's cases, reported cases in all 50 states. And I think the, the expectation there is that those will start in urban centers and that they will spread across the country. Um, and so the, I think the issue that the president, I think, does need to wrestle with um, is clearly communicating, on the one hand, that aspiration that we get through this quickly. On the other hand, being accurate with folks to say, look, you're, you can't just will this economy to recovery. Because if people think that by going to church or by going to Easter brunch or uh, dinner that next week, you're going to potentially contract a virus that's going to put you in the hospital, you're still not going to go. So what you need here is the economic recovery package to be able to give confidence to Americans and their families to take care of themselves for at the very least the next month plus. Take right. care of yourself, focus on yourself, focus on your health, get healthy, get well, stay well. And if we do that, we can weather the next month. We, what we did here, if you think of the the GDP that our country project produces about 22 trillion a year. We just have passed 10% of that, right. more than a month worth, to basically try to prop up the economy so that people can in fact do that. But you're not gonna go back out to, to church or to work if you think that doing so could put you in the hospital. And yeah. I think the president is gonna wrestle with that reality. As Dr. Fauci said, we don't get to make the timelines here, the virus does. Yeah, I thought that was a very good line. So I know you've had to suspend your campaign, as I said, when you fell off the uh, connection there. Joe is running for the Senate in Massachusetts. He's been a congressman uh, for many, many years now and is running for the Senate. You've had to suspend your campaign, uh, but you've also been doing these town halls on Facebook. How do people uh, join you on your town halls? How do, they, how do you keep a campaign alive when you can't keep a campaign alive? <laughs> Great question. So um, we're trying. Um, and look, we suspended the campaign temporarily, but we suspended it about two weeks ago um, because you, our whole strategy was to go out there and shake more hands, give more high fives, more hugs, more fist bumps to, to everybody we could. And you can't do that. Um, and so what you need to do is 
make sure people are taking care of themselves, take care of our campaign and our campaign workers. Um, and so we've done that. And to try to focus all of our efforts on communication about the virus and, and what we need to do to get through it. So we're doing kind of Facebook lives and check-ins often in the morning and then uh, oftentimes check-ins at night about just where things are given the changing nature of information and how quickly it, it is evolving and trying to be clear and communicate clearly. But then also having these, these town halls and broadcasts, which are done live off of our Facebook page and you can go uh, right there uh, on Facebook. It's just Joe Kennedy. Um, the, uh, the Joe Kennedy III is the, the Facebook account. Um, and you just Google it real quick or do a quick uh, search on Facebook. Um, but we've done broadcasts. We did one um, just last night with uh, Peter Reynolds, who's an award-winning children's author. Uh, and he read one of his books actually about uh, Maria, your grandmother, um, that wow. he had done called Rose's Garden. Um, and about the journey that a little girl goes on and one of perseverance in this garden that blossoms um, in Boston. Um, We, we, um, it says no sound, no, no sound, huh? No sound. We have no God, sound. I guess we're really not doing a great job here, technically. We're doing a great job. <laughs> okay. They say you can't hear. No audio. Can you hear so, us, I Joe? Hear. Yeah, no I can hear sound, you. No sound, no sound. Huh. Yeah, no one can. else can hear us for some reason. Can't hear. Take off hear your you. Bluetooth, silly. Who's oh, there. We can hear. <laughs> we can hear. Okay, yeah, so, we can so, hear. So, uh, we had, I guess we went over the time limit uh on instagram live so it shut down on us for for a second <laughs> there so i don't know uh, we, we were talking about how joe keeps his campaign for the senate alive and i was saying earlier that i think people are seeing how important statewide leadership is in this uh time of need people are seeing exactly what their congress people do what their governor does what their local city council people do have you been getting a different reaction joe to people kind of understanding maybe the role of their local congressman or congresswoman, their local um, city councils? Maria, I think what I've seen more than anything is just a desperate, um, a desperate need for help, right? And a desperate need for government. And it's interesting, um, you know, we've heard an awful lot over the course of the past couple of years, how government is, gets in the way and clunky and how it is the problem and we need less of it. Um, yeah. it's pretty amazing how quickly people think that you need more of it when you really need it, right? Um, and I think one of the, the things about this virus, I don't want to say given the pain that it's caused that it's a silver lining, but um, it, has, um, it has been a diagnostic die throughout our society about showing the cracks and fissures here. Um, uh, this idea that somehow you can um, get in front of a pandemic by not... Um, even if not everybody out in your country has access to healthcare or access to testing or treatment. Look, you're not gonna tax cut your way out of that problem. You can't build a wall around a private, uh, uh, you know, a private compound or private police force or private schools. It, it, somebody's gonna get sick and somebody's gonna perpetuate that, uh, the spread of that virus if everybody doesn't have access to treatment. Um, we're seeing this obviously um, in grave effect in, in Massachusetts about uh, an early childcare industry that is, uh, the rest of us rely on every single day to be able to go to work. Well, if you don't have people that are taking care of your kids because your kids, thank God, they don't seem to get quite so sick from it, very young ones. But if they're transmitting it to their parents or adults, um, that can't, our, our, that doesn't work. So they shut down a childcare uh, industry. Well, that just means all of a sudden nobody can go to work because you got to care for your family. What it means for gig workers, for Uber and Lyft, if people have to choose between making ends meet and providing paying their rent versus um, their own health care. How confident are you going to be to get in the back of, a, uh, of, a, of an Uber ride if your driver's got a cough because he's got to feed his family um, and if people don't have paid leave or access to health benefits? 
And so I think what people are recognizing is, um, you know, this frame of government always getting in the way and slowing things down, that might work when times are good. But one, times weren't always great for everybody. And two, when times aren't, you really need something there. And how we heard uh, a pretty drastic change of tune when all of a sudden the economy was ground to a halt, not because of our financial system failed, but because our healthcare system did. Right. But the only way to save our healthcare system was then to get people away from each other and lock them up in our homes. And you need, you need something then to, to fill that gap, and that's been government. And so people are, are desperate for help, and they are calling out about that quite frequently. Well, right. I, yeah, well, I think that's been, uh, you're absolutely right. People have seen their, uh, the role of government um, at this point in time, and they, as you said, they need government to step in and help them, and that's across the board. It doesn't care what party you are, what age you are. People need help, and they're looking to the government. And today, uh, thank God they got some help from the government. They got some uh, hope from the government, and they'll continue to need hope, and they'll continue to look to leaders like you uh, to offer them hope. So we want to thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Joe. It's yeah. great to see you. Hey, thanks, guys. Speak with you. How's your arm? How's the shoulder? It's uh, it's getting better. I can get up to my forehead and a little above now, and it's uh, it's progressing. I guess this isn't the worst time to have uh, a surgery since we're already at home and, and not doing too much. But um, <laughs> you know, onward and upward. And we want to thank you, Joe. Uh, I I want to reiterate, Joe is doing these town halls on his Facebook page, uh, so you can follow him. If you live in Massachusetts, you can vote for him. This is my private and uh, hope Instagram will. page so we can say that <laughs> um, Thank and, you. Uh, you can follow him and we'll touch base with you again Joe as this proceeds and if you want to say uh, if you want to touch base with us again just ask to join our live conversations and we'll you got it bring you we'll, in. We'll all right. all in. thanks you guys okay. well. and call Stay Bethany because she wants to get some mass up to Massachusetts beautiful yeah she already has and I will okay. much love Great. Be well. Thank, you. Take care. Thank you so bye. much. Okay, bye bye. So See you guys. We, we oh, want to well, we yes. remind you uh, tomorrow. tomorrow to join us for Small Business Saturday on Patrick's Instagram feed. That's Patrick Schwarzenegger. Let's and put that in the bottom so people can see it. We'll Oops. do what? What's happening? I'm going to type it so that they have it. Okay, so, okay. 1 p.m. Eastern. You can join us. Patrick, S C H A R. Okay. Yeah. So um, that's right. 1 p.m. Eastern at Patrick Schwarzenegger. We'll be talking with Ed Milet, who is really uh, inspiring, motivating, and has a lot of really good ideas. If you have a business, a small business, if you're an independent contractor and you need some ideas and motivation. Um, yeah, this will be for people that, are, that own businesses, that work at businesses. Um, or just for anybody in general. I mean, it's really going to talk about, like you said, how to have the right mindset, how to, uh, you know, hack your mind to, to really think, uh, you know, positively during these times and um, give you motivation and inspiration from, you know, one of the best to, uh, to be out there and doing this. So we hope you join tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern at Patrick Schwarzenegger. And uh, any, uh, any questions you guys have, please bring them because we're going to be answering them all. So hope you have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. God bless.